Sleem Rezai here, and on this quick little video, we're going to talk about do you know your T waves on the EKG? So let me start off with a case. I have a 65 year old guy coming in with crushing chest pain, diaphoretic, radiating to his left shoulder, shorter breath, nausea, vomiting. Patient doesn't look good. This is the EKG you get, and basically, what you can see is that. There are ST elevations in 1 and AVL, and there are reciprocal depressions in the inferior leads of 2, 3, and AVF. But what really jumps out at me in this EKG is V2 through V4. Those T waves are not normal. Those are um, hyperacute T waves and can sometimes be the first sign of acute ischemia in a patient having an occlusion myocardial infarction. And so here you can see the anterior hyperacute T waves. Now let's say this is a normal T wave and basically this is all about proportionality. So you can see that the T wave is relatively small. It's uh, very symmetric uh, compared to the QRS and basically this looks like what you would consider normal T wave morphology. If I take that EKG from before and I zoom in on V3, you can see how much bigger that T wave is. It's this kind of broad based basically hyperacute, very tall T wave. It's usually bigger than the QRS. And the way I make this distinction is if I can fit my QRS into my T wave, that's pretty concerning for hyperacute T waves. Here's another example of a, another patient. This was a 56 year old uh, female coming in with crushing chest pain. And if you look at the inferior leads, uh, two, three and AVF, you can see that there are not only ST elevations, but there are also hyperacute T waves. Those T waves are broad based. They're tall, they're taller than the QRS and that QRS definitely fits inside of that T wave. Here's another patient um, that comes in. This is a 47 year old patient complaining of chest pain. And this is the EKG you get. And this patient uh, got activated for a heart alert um, because of the big T waves. But the thing here is that these T waves are not hyperacute. And the reason they're not hyperacute has to do with the morphology. There's kind of a, a slow uh, upslope in V2, V3, and V4, and then kind of a precipitous drop in that T wave. And the QRS uh, is wide, and I can see why there would be some concern here, but because of the morphology of this uh, T wave, this is basically benign early repolarization. So let me zoom in here. So we're gonna look at three types of T waves that we just talked about. Benign early repol, right? There's gonna be a slow upslope and then a precipitous drop at the end of the T wave. That's gonna be more likely to be benign early repol. Hyperacute T waves are gonna be symmetric on both sides. They're gonna have a very broad base, um, just like your benign early repol, but they're gonna be symmetric in the way that they go up and that they come down. And they're usually much, much taller than the QRS. As a matter of fact, the QRS usually can fit underneath that T wave. And then there's another T wave we haven't talked about, and that's the peak T wave. Uh, these can also be very tall. They can be larger than the QRS, but they're very narrow. Um, and the way this was taught to me when I was in school is that peak T waves, which are usually a sign of hyperkalemia compared to hyperacute T waves, if you had to sit on top of one of these, which one do you think would be more painful? The one that would be more painful is usually associated with a peaked T wave. So here's a patient, a dialysis patient. They had missed their dialysis for a few sessions. Uh, they came in uh, complaining of chest pain, and you can look at especially lead V3 and V4, and there's some very, very large uh, T waves there, but they're super narrow. Um, and the patient ended up having a potassium of 8.1. Now, we basically gave them calcium chloride. We gave them D50 uh, with 10 units of insulin. We gave them an amp of bicarb. We basically shifted them until we could get them to dialysis. And here you can see a repeat EKG on that patient after shifting with their potassium down to 6.5. Now those T waves are still pretty big, especially in V3. There's probably a component of benign early repol here in this EKG as well, but you can see the significance of that T wave. There's a fourth T wave that we haven't talked about, and that's a DeWinters T wave. Um, and if you actually look at your leads uh, V3 through V6, you can see this ST depression that kind of goes up into this kind of large T wave and it's symmetric on both sides, both where it goes up and where it goes down. And this is what a DeWinters T wave is, is when you see that ST depression with that symmetric uh, hyperacute T wave, that is known as DeWinters T wave. One final EKG, this is what you call ectopoopy. Um, and what is ectopoopy? Well, it's when you look at an EKG and you say, oh shit, 
this patient's probably going to die. So uh, that's what I got for you on T-Waves. Uh, let me know what you think. Um, four T-Waves we covered, and let me know what questions you have.